Welcome to Sushi This Week. I'm Mary Lee. It's good to have you with us. Coming up in this week's top stories, in the Philippines, Tacloban residents prepare for a weekend filled with blessings. The number of certified CG volunteers in Honduras expand with the help of one seed. In China, Hainan CG volunteers hold winter aid distributions for low-income families in High Coast City. We start the show in the Philippines. Today, January 18th, and tomorrow, January 19th, Siji volunteers in Tacloban plan on holding year-end blessing ceremonies at the Lighta Sports Center. Volunteers anticipate around 20,000 residents per session, and in order for the event to run smoothly, earlier in the week, volunteers held a rehearsal. Despite the rain, over 1,000 local volunteers showed up at the stadium, all wanting to do their part to repay the love Siji Foundation has given it. On one end, the rehearsal preparations are being set up, while on the other end, volunteers for the Year and Blessing Ceremony have arrived. Patiently, the volunteers wait in the rain. Today, at Tacloban's largest outdoor stadium, over 1,400 people are preparing for the upcoming Year and Blessing Ceremony. Yeah, I can you know, because I really like this uh, foundation. We feel very comfortable with the twisty sit here. So that's why we join, we join, we join the, any kind of activities of the duties. Out of the 140 groups who came to the training seminar, over 120 groups showed up today. That's over a 90% attendance rate. Thank you and give yourselves a hand. Before the start of the rehearsals, a moment of prayer is held to calm hearts, as the tasks for today are very important. Anticipating about 20,000 people per ceremony, the entrance and exiting procedures need to be planned just right. These are the tasks the local volunteers are helping with. I will show them first. It's lucky I had my red envelope with me. On that day, they will lead a group of about 20 guests. During the ceremony, each participant will come forward to receive their blessings. The local volunteers not only watch the sequence, but also run through it to familiarize themselves with the process. I think it's a more on uh, blessing, blessing from uh, Chuchi Foundation. It's uh, Thank you very much for the um, support. I'm here to volunteer for the year-end blessing ceremony because I hope for Tacloban and the Philippines to be at peace. Of course, after the ceremony is complete, departure from the stadium needs to be planned as well. We are most worried about crowding at the entrances. People can't leave or come in, and everyone ends up stuck. Or when they do come in, they won't know where to go. It's this type of disorder that we are concerned about, so we wish to direct the flow of people from the start. Knowing the importance of the task at hand, these local volunteers listen carefully so that on the day of the event, a dignified year-end ceremony can be held where hearts are united and compassion is assembled. Now let's go for a behind-the-scenes look at the rehearsal at Lighta Sports Center and see how volunteers overcame obstacles to ensure the event will be successful. Prior to the rehearsal for the year-end blessing ceremony here in Takleban, participants make way for the helicopter as it heads back to the airport. According to the weather, uh, unfortunately the low pressure area is uh, holding on in uh, about uh, 100 kilometers east of Gibbon because there are two high pressure areas just north that is pushing and holding that low pressure area. That's according to the weather. The unstable weather does not deter everyone's determination in taking part, as some 90% of those who attended the training seminar show up. On the day of our training seminar, we announced the wrong date, so we had to quickly take some of our team members. Some had left their uniforms at home and had to come straight from work. I was glad to know that they felt obliged to attend the rehearsal today because they had taken part in the training. Whether it is the rain or having to take leave from work, residents overcome it all to fulfill their promise to attend the event. 
Among the participants, Vanessa and her siblings are taking part to reciprocate Siji's love. Uh, we have decided to volunteer. Uh, when Chuchi Foundation actually called for volunteers for this event, we volunteered ourselves. Uh, this is um, in return to the help that Chuchi Foundation extended to us, like the cash for work program and the assistance, the financial assistance to us. We want to help. And I just want to help again. In fact, Vanessa returned to her hometown before the typhoon struck, and as she will be heading back to Canada for work on the 20th, Vanessa wants to seize every opportunity to give. The, the money from the Cash for Work program really helped us uh, in buying our uh, basic commodities, the, our basic needs like food, especially, because we don't have much uh, relief by the time. So we bought the money for our daily needs, like the foods, uh, clothing, you know, for, for candles at night. Wanting to do the best job they can, residents listen intently to the instructions and take note of their assigned role. I would take note this number so that I would guide the other people who would partake this event on the, on the, on the 19th of uh, Sunday. The year and blessing ceremony will not be possible without the help of everyone here. We are limited in time because I have to go to OMAK soon. So I told them I don't have time to double check and that they must check the signal for me, to which they happily agree. Despite the challenges ahead, volunteers and residents are united as one in ensuring the upcoming event goes smoothly. While final preparations for Takloban's Year and Blessing Ceremony this weekend run like clockwork, Ciji volunteer Huang Jiefang visited the chairman of Barangay 7, local residents and schools to personally deliver invitations for the event. Each invitation is an extension of Ciji's blessings. Therefore, it must be delivered in person. January 18th, be sure to invite everyone to attend. Ciji volunteer Huang Jiefang pays the Barangay 7 chairman Vilma Kobila a visit to personally deliver some 6,000 invitations for Ciji's year and blessing ceremony. Ciji is holding a blessing ceremony this Saturday. It will begin at 6.30 p.m. To help, Wang also visits residents door to door to extend the invitation to more people. Seeing the familiar blue and white uniform, the residents' reaction is Tiji is the catalyst of change in Takloban, so I will most definitely attend the blessing ceremony this Saturday. I want to attend and experience this event, and I want to give my thanks personally for the help we received from Tiji. No amount of words can express the deep gratitude in the hearts of Takloban residents for the plentiful love they have received from around the world. We hope to bring everyone's compassion together at the 10,000 people blessing ceremony and together we can pray for a world free of calamities and disasters and for peace and harmony to soon restore in Takloban. With city volunteers by their side through this tumultuous time to reciprocate the love they have received, disaster survivors are ready to put their love into action. With the goal of helping around 3,000 Typhoon Haiyan victims in Laita Province's Palo Town, Ciji volunteers arrived to distribute aid vouchers on January 15th. On that day, to the volunteers' surprise, local residents reciprocated by bringing PET bottles filled with spare change to donate. Prior to the start, volunteers first extend their apologies to local residents. Thank you for coming. We're sorry you had to wait in the rain. Upon learning that city will be distributing consolation cash to typhoon survivors on January 20th, residents arrived early to pick up their ACE vouchers. We were informed through friends that Chuchi is helping us uh, typhoon victims of Yolanda. We will, we will use this money uh, to, to repair our houses. The story of Tsiji's bamboo coin bank has already spread throughout Palo, and this mother-daughter pair brings their savings as a token of their gratitude. We will always love you, and we will not forget you. I earned this for my piggy bank. Even if this is a small amount, I can, I can give this, and it is heartily given for everyone. Although young, Mario has big aspirations and hopes to canvas more love and compassion. 
Meanwhile, some residents also donated spare change on site. Volunteers even found a note of appreciation inside one bottle. Although many Filipinos are of the Catholic faith, its tenets of charitable giving are no different than those found in Buddhism. And much like what's inscribed on the banner hanging on the wall, love is now flourishing in hearts everywhere. On January 16th, Suji volunteers were joined by the CEO of Philippine Airlines, Chen Yongzai, as they surveyed the progress of recovery in both Orbach and Tacloban. Philippine Airlines CEO Chen Yongzai, who is also a Tsiji honorary board member, arrives in Ormark to get an update on Tsiji's relief efforts. Chen takes a close look at the first batch of completed prefab classrooms in Ormark for Ipil Central Elementary School. The building materials immediately aroused great interest from the CEO. Upon entering, one immediately notices the skylight. This thoughtful and user-friendly design brings additional light and fresh air when opened. This is great. <laughs> Although a man of few words, Chen's excitement can be seen on his face. From the warm and inviting settings indoors to the clean and tidy exterior, Chen notices each detail. Before departing, students and teachers of the school take a picture with Chen to capture this rare moment. Driving along the country road, the group finally reach an open field. This plot of land has been donated by the Omak City Mayor to Tsiji. When the mayor heard that we were in need of land, he told us about two plots of land that we could use if we liked. The one is about 7 hectares and the other is about 50. So that the victims, the family victims of the Taipan Yolanda can avail of that land and also the donors can easily or immediately construct the, and donate the houses to the victims. With the children's education and the livelihoods of residents in mind, the local government and city volunteers are doing their best to help. The next stop for Chen is Takloban, where he will join the city volunteers there to map out a medium to long-term recovery plan for the city. In the aftermath of Typhoon Haiyan, groups of local volunteers from Marikina, most of whom were victims of Typhoon Kansana themselves, also traveled to Takloban to care for residents. One such volunteer was Renalin. This home, built with some wood logs and a canvas, is where Renante and his children have been staying since their home was washed away. Okay. Okay. I'm not sure. 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 I'm not the floods took away everything from this family, including Renate's mother, his wife, and three children. Fortunately, a son and daughter survived. Sabi ko ng panganay ko, hawakan mong mga bata. Asawa ko ko. I told my son to hold on to his sister, and I carried my wife. We held on to them with our life. But the wind and waves were just too strong. I just couldn't hold on anymore. Although it's been two months, that traumatic encounter is still fresh in Renante's mind. His pain and sorrow brings tears to Renalyn's eyes. If I was in this situation, it would be hard for me to find the courage to face the future as well. The toil of a nine-month pregnancy only to be taken away by God in an instant. That is so very heartbreaking. As a mother of three, Renalyn empathizes with Renante's pain, but encourages him to be brave for the sake of his children. It must have been God's will to let you live. More importantly, you now have to take on the role of father and mother. Your children need you. You need to be their father and also mother. 
as they need your guidance and love. Typhoon Kitsana devastated Marikina City in 2009. The aid and love that poured in in the immediate aftermath deeply moved Drenalyn and her husband. After joining City's Cash for Work program, the couple realized that they too have the ability to help those less fortunate. We were also once City Care recipients. Now it's our turn to take care of those who need our help. We pray for them to recover as soon as possible so that they can leave their pain and sorrows behind and start over. Thus, even if it means leaving home at midnight and taking two flights from Manila to Tacloban, although physically tired, Renalyn's spirit remains bright. Are you tired? Uh, tired? No, not, not really. Joining volunteers in the disaster area for the third time, she will continue to deliver warmth and comfort to those in need. Moving to Central America, at the Tsuji Volunteer Training Seminar in Honduras, over 700 local volunteers and Tsuji members endured high heat to learn more about Tsuji. Chen Ching Chao also became the second certified Tsuji volunteer in Honduras. Although it is more than 35 degrees Celsius in Honduras, over 700 local volunteers and Tsuji members are participating in the second Tsuji Training Seminar in Moncovia's Monjaras. From the United States, Li Xiang, who is in charge of the seminar, has witnessed much transformation in one and a half years. Standing here today, things are completely different now. I see about 120 training volunteers in their grey uniforms and another 50 people wearing the volunteer vest. We can use the money in the bamboo coin banks to build houses. I know this sounds really difficult. The donations come from each and every one of you. Fifteen years later, I am in Honduras once again. I see brother Zhang Hongtai who has inspired so many locals to join us. The Honduras Tsuji family is finally taking shape. I saw a baby girl just three weeks old here at our training seminar. Perhaps one day she might become a commissioner. At the end of the class, U.S. Tsuji Headquarters CEO Huang Han Kui, representing Master Zheng Yan, awards the second Tsuji Volunteer Certificate given out in Honduras to volunteer Chen Qin Cao. Fellow volunteers welcome the newest member on the Tsuji path and remind him to keep the Buddha's compassion and the Master's teaching in his heart always. I can really feel the weight of my responsibility now. I hope to make progress in my home area of San Pedro Sula, just like here in Monjaras. The journey is long and the responsibility is heavy, but local volunteers have come to understand Siji's great love and will do their share. We will invite more people to join us so that they may become more self-reliant. As long as we love one another, help one another, then our children will grow up surrounded by love. One day they will be able to extend this universal love to more people. Earlier in January, Tsuji volunteers in Hainan Province, China, held a winter aid distribution in Haikou City's Longhua District. For 800 families, at this year's event, many local residents, ranging from government officials to university students, also partook as volunteers. It's 5 in the morning and the sun has not risen, yet Hainan Tsuji volunteers are already busy moving aid supplies and decorating the venue. <laughs> This year in Longhua District, Haikou City, 800 families are receiving Tsuji's winter aid. Tsuji Foundation from Taiwan is providing winter aid for our district's low-income residents. On behalf of the Longhua District government, I want to express our sincerest gratitude to Taiwan's Tsuji Foundation. Hainan Province is China's southernmost province. In the past few years, it has also been marketed as a tourist destination. However, in Haikou City, there are still numerous low-income families in need of assistance. Thus, Tsuji for the last four years has held winter aid distributions to help. This year, many government officials joined the ranks of the volunteers. 
From organizing the events to recruiting volunteers, everything was done in an orderly fashion. Thus, we were inspired to help. We wanted to join the volunteers to give a little of our love. During the distribution, volunteers hand over aid supplies respectfully as they warmly interact with recipients. Among the volunteers are Hainan University students and local employees who are enjoying this experience. When I was helping carry rice for others, I felt as if I had unlimited strength because seeing the smiles on people's faces or hearing a word of thanks made me feel like the effort I put in was all worth it. I'm very happy to be able to have joined in the activity today. I really wanted to participate in today's work. It is through their selfless giving that these volunteers ensure that recipients will have a warm and happy Lunar New Year. Continuing in China, to provide those forgotten by society in Fuzhou, Fujian province with love to pass the winter days, Suji volunteers held an aid distribution on January 11th, helping 3,000 families. Fujian province's Fuzhou has in recent years been characterized by high-rise buildings and modern landscapes. Yet in this affluent society are still many people living on the brink of poverty and dependent on government subsidies to get by. Therefore, Tsuji volunteers organized a winter aid distribution to help some 3,000 impoverished families. You volunteers care for those who have no one to depend on. We are not related by blood, yet you always think about us and help us. Even if I'm not here to pick up aid supplies, I still want to see you volunteers who so selflessly serve the poor and society. Although the temperature outside is only 10 degrees Celsius, the enthusiasm of volunteers make it easy to forget the cold. Wang Ruihua, who was once a driven and ambitious businessman, rediscovered life's purpose after joining Tsuji three years ago. What's meaningful in life is being able to help others. It's not about how much we know, how much money we earn, or what luxuries we can enjoy. There is no purpose to that. We eventually forget about it all. Also finding a purpose in life through giving is Ong Xiang. Four years ago, she suffered the biggest loss of her life, losing her son to leukemia. But through helping others in need, she now has a different outlook on life. Once a flying kite is broken, you should let it go so it can fly further. There's no need to keep holding on. At the conclusion of the distribution, volunteers pack additional aid supplies to pay seniors living in remote villages a visit. 93-year-old Grandma Huang lives in solitude in her family's ancestral home. The volunteers' visit brings warmth, like the bright sunshine on a cold winter's day. <laughs> grandma Huang is very friendly. It's as if she's my own grandmother. The aid and love of Tiji volunteers have warmed the hearts of impoverished residents and solitary seniors who are no longer lonely knowing that volunteers will be by their side. At the end of the show, we turn our camera back to the Philippines to bring you images of the year and blessing ceremony in Ormoc, Laita Province from January 17th. We will leave you with these images. Thank you for watching. See you next week.